I've tried out four leather half cases for my Leica M11 plus the Leica hand grip. And there is a clear winner between these half cases. So I'll show how they look on the camera body and uh, which one is my favorite. First, I'll talk about the uh, Leica hand grip. And I use this uh, when I have a heavy lens on my uh, M11 or if I'm going to be out uh, shooting for uh, the whole day. It's pretty easy to install, uh, just uh, screwing it in. And the hand grip uh, does feel very sturdy. It has a softened uh, metallic uh, kind of build, and the uh, hand grip leather uh, matches the uh, camera body leather exactly. And on the bottom, you have a tripod mount, and you can open up the uh, rubberized uh, bottom to access the battery and the SD card and the charging uh, port. And the hand grip is uh, compatible with the Arcus mount, so you can mount this uh, directly on the tripod. I'll talk about the accessories that I already have mounted on the camera. I have the Leica screen protector and the thumbs up grip, which I find is really helpful to get a good grip on the camera. And then I have a soft release a shutter button, which uh, I just got recently and I never realized how helpful that could be. Uh, it is black and it matches the uh, camera uh, body, but the main benefit is that it steadies the camera so you don't get as much camera shake when taking a photo. These two are from the same brand that I found on Amazon. The same leather, but different color. It's a pretty good quality leather, and the leather finishing also matches the exterior of the M11. There is a small logo at the bottom, which I prefer it didn't have. But this one also has an open door to access the battery and the SD card and the charger. And this one is also uh, easy to screw in and uh, everything looks uh, like a nice finish and a good fit to the camera. The interior material is lined with a soft uh, felt uh, material which does a good job of protecting the camera. And this one also came with a free wrist strap. And here it is with the black leather. And this is a nice uh, choice for a stealthy look. The uh, black uh, leather uh, texture uh, exactly matches the uh, leather on the Leica M11 body. So these two leather cases are just kind of basic cases that do their job well. And the best thing is their uh, price. Uh, very inexpensive. Uh, they're at uh, $59 each. And again, this came with a free uh, wrist strap and a nice uh, holder protector for the case. And the next one is the actual Leica branded half case. And this one is in an olive green. It has very premium uh, leather, a very smooth uh, calfskin type of leather. And the build quality on this is a, a next step up. It does feel a little bit larger, a little bit more bulky, but it feels extremely well built. It is a little bit more difficult to install this. You have to open the bottom door and then uh, screw it in from there. But this has an extra feature where you can store an extra SD card uh, on the bottom of the camera. So this half case gives the camera a more a dressy appearance, a more premium looking, and adds a little bit more color. And the last one, and I think the best half case that I've tried out so far is from uh, Oberworth, and it's the most, most expensive one also, but the leather feels extremely nice and it looks extremely well built, and it has that nice uh, red lining inside. To install this, uh, the uh, screw is a little bit uh, tight and difficult to turn, but they do uh, provide this tool in the case uh, to help install it. And there is some small branding at the bottom, which I prefer it didn't have. Uh, but the uh, access door, uh, I believe there's a, a magnet that holds it together, and the friction holds it together too. But I believe this little bump here is the magnet. 
and that looks beautiful inside. Very easy to remove the battery and access the charging port. But this has an extra little hand grip on the side. It's not extra deep, but it does give you that extra little help to grip the camera. Uh, but again, the leather feels extremely nice. Uh, this is the rusty brown color. I was afraid that it might look too red. And when I first opened it in the uh, sunny daylight, it did look uh, like it had a red tint to it. But in a normal uh, room lighting, it's more of a, a brown, or maybe a slight burgundy color. But another thing I like about it is that it just uh, molds to the camera. It's uh, perfectly sized to the M11, uh, whereas the Leica case kind of just uh, lets the camera sit inside the case. Uh, the Oberworth case actually hugs it very well, really conforms to the body of the camera, and it just kind of feels molded onto it. So this is the case that I'll be using most uh, from here on in. It adds that nice uh, vintage, classic kind of look to the camera. The latest lens that I purchased is this 21 millimeter Super Elmar F3.4 ASPH. And I got this used from KEH, but it uh, looks like it's in excellent condition. It comes with this uh, metal lens hood, but the uh, lens cap is actually plastic and slide on, which uh, doesn't feel like great quality. So uh, I'm just not going to use the lens hood at all. It also comes with an extra lens cap, uh, which is which is metal also, but uh, I'm not going to use that either. So I'm just going to use this with a, a UV protector to protect the front lens. I wanted to try out a super wide lens uh, for the first time, since my other lenses are a lot longer. I have the 35 millimeter Sumalux, the 50 millimeter Sumalux and the 75 millimeter Sumacron. Uh, but uh, when I went to New York City last year, I only took my 50 millimeter with me and I got some great shots, but uh, I missed some other shots uh, because uh, I didn't have a wide angle lens with me. This one was released in 2011 and it's still a current uh, production model. The uh, maximum aperture is 3.4, and it goes uh, down to f16. So 3.4 is not extremely fast, but for a 21 millimeter lens, um, I'm going to be shooting uh, street photos with this, uh, streetscapes or landscapes. So I really don't need an uh, f1.4 or uh, f2. The uh, Sumalux 21mm uh, uh, does offer a, a f1.4, but that's much more expensive and it's much uh, bigger and heavier. Uh, so I think the 21mm um, f3.4 would work uh, just fine for me. I probably won't even be using the f3.4 very often. Um, I figured I would probably use it at f8 or f5.6. Uh, but when I took my first uh, test shots on the first day at uh, F8 and F11, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. The pictures uh, didn't look very sharp um, straight out of the camera. But uh, a couple days later, I took some more shots at F5.6, and uh, those came out much sharper, and I was much more satisfied with this lens. And then I heard that uh, this lens actually works best at F5.6. I had heard that the rear element of the lens uh, can stick out and come close to the sensor of the body, but when I compared it to my 35, there's really not that much difference between the two. And on the camera, it looks really nice. This is my smallest and lightest M lens so far, and it's non-obtrusive and it doesn't catch a lot of attention, 
So I feel like that I could do street photography with this, uh, streetscapes and landscapes. Uh, build quality is uh, excellent, just like any Leica lens. The aperture has uh, nice clicks to it. And the focus ring does have some uh, stiffness to it, which I prefer. And it does have that focus tab at the bottom, which again, I like to have that on, on all my lenses. I thought about getting a 24 millimeter, but I already have a 28 millimeter on my Leica Q2. So I thought the 21 millimeter would make a bigger difference. So these are very wide angle views. I couldn't have gotten on my 35 millimeter unless I stitched two shots together. I'll show a comparison to the 35 millimeter Sumalux, but some of these shots are hit and miss in terms of sharpness. This one looks very sharp. Uh, but other ones are a little bit softer. I shot all of them at uh, f5.6 uh, and without the lens hood I managed to get some flare shooting into the sun. The uh, colors are, are very nice um, but a little bit less contrast than the 35mm uh, Sumalux. So I ended up turning up the contrast in Lightroom slightly but I really didn't do much more editing on these photos. I shot this first with the 21mm and then the 35mm Sumalux standing in the same spot and both with the aperture set at f5.6 and both with automatic shutter speed and ISO. The 21mm takes in a lot in the photo so it gives a nice scenic view and it looks fairly sharp at this distance. And I did just turn up the contrast slightly to make it more comparable to the 35mm Sumalux. And then when I looked at the 35mm Sumalux FLE, I immediately saw a big difference in terms of sharpness. The uh, 35 Sumalux uh, looks uh, extremely sharp, especially the lines uh, going vertically in the barn. I liked the 21mm field of view in this example. But the 35mm uh, Sumalux uh, definitely produces a uh, much higher quality image. And I know it's not a fair comparison because the 35 is much more expensive. And cropping in 100%, uh, you can clearly see the difference in terms of sharpness on the vertical lines on the barn. The 21mm uh, looks a little bit soft but uh, comparing it to the 35 millimeter, uh, that one looks extremely sharp and clear. That was an extreme example, but without any cropping or zooming, the 21 millimeter does produce nice uh, sharp images and it works well enough for my purposes. But the 35 millimeter Sumalux is extremely sharp uh, across the whole image and it's still one of my best lenses along with the 50 millimeter Sumalux. This was a good value at a used price and it fits really nice on the camera. Very light and low profile. I'm looking forward to taking it to New York or Philadelphia to try it out with doing some uh, street photography.